Okay, so we're going to do a meditation on refuge. So here we go. Back into meditation posture. Stabilize and ground yourself. And coming back to your motivation, altruistic, expansive, deep, the purpose of my life is to understand suffering and its causes, to understand happiness and its causes, in order to dispel the first and increase the second. And I do this in order to be of greatest benefit to all living beings, my friends, my family, my co-workers, my neighbors and society, all human beings, all beings throughout all realms, May I bring out the best in myself and touch it more consistently. May I bring out the best in others and help facilitate their path. And phrasing that into your own words, but some sort of bodhicitta, secular or Mahayana, some sort of refuge, abstract or defined, And bring your focus back to the breath, allowing the surface distractions to settle.
shifts to analysis. Well, a little bit more about these two causes for refuge. So the causes being fear, meaning fear of what your untamed mind will create for yourself and others, and faith, meaning conviction, based on the methods of the Dharma being useful and true. And so these are the two reasons or causes for going for refuge, but how do you apply that to yourself as an individual? So spend a couple of minutes contemplating the causes for refuge. What is it healthy to have fear in? What is it logical to have faith in? And then visualize in the space in front of you is a lion throne. On top of which is a broad open lotus. On top of which is a sun disk. On top of which is a moon disk. And these three represent and embody the determination to be free from samsara, the correct view of emptiness, and bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment. Without these three, there are no Buddha. Seated there is Shakyamuni Buddha. He has one face and two arms, his legs in the Vajra position. His right hand is stretched down. His left is in his lap, holding an alms bowl filled with wisdom nectar. He is radiating gold light and is made of gold light. His black hair is tied up in a top knot with a crown protrusion. His monastic robes hover an inch from his body. He is smiling gently, has long ears, wide eyes, half open, half closed, looking directly at you and simultaneously holding all other sentient beings in his gaze.
He is a valid source of refuge because he has freed himself from fear. He's freed himself from the fear of the lower realms, the upper realms, samsara in general. Freed himself of the fear of not knowing and no control. Freed himself of all of the fears that arise due to the disturbing emotions. He's completely purified his mind stream and developed all of the mind's capacity to their utmost extent. He is skilled in freeing others from fear. not making false promises, not saying overly simplistic things like just be good, but he actually teaches the techniques for that to arise authentically through mind training. And his beneficial attitude and aid is offered to everyone equally, whether they make offerings to him or not, whether they're well behaved or not, whether they believe in him or not. The Buddha is working for the welfare of sentient beings equally at all times. how much benefit they actually receive is based on their own karmic dispositions, not his intention. His compassion is completely unbiased and impartial. If our refuge wasn't completely biased and impartial, it would be like just every other ordinary being. We are full of bias, full of prejudice. This is how people are, and why people are not reliable sources of refuge. Regular ordinary beings are just naturally full of contaminated self-interest, unreliability. Which should make our heart open to having compassion towards them, but never taking refuge in them. And so reconnect with the sense of Shakyamuni Buddha in the space in front. Nectar flows down from his holy body, entering into your own body and mind, and into the body and mind of every sentient being. The nectar purifies completely all disease, harm from spirits, obstacles to your lifespan negative karmas and obscurations accumulated by you and by other sentient beings. The nectar then fully develops all positive qualities, life, merit, and scriptural understanding and realizations of the Guru Triple Gem in your mind and in the minds of others. And now dedicate. Through the power of these thoughts, may I touch and enrich my refuge. May I help others touch and enrich theirs. And may all of this lead to enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, as well as daily happiness and well-being, connection with ethics, etc. And you can relax your attention. Okay, see you next time.